Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to the seventh high game tutorial video from Centex for Bucky at the New Boston. Where we left off, uh, we've got the idea of how we can draw things to the screen, but we want this game to be a snake game and we want to be able to move the snake around. So, generally, when people first do this stuff, this is like the most exciting thing is when we can actually like move things with our keyboard. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. So what we're going to do now is add a few things. So first of all, in order to move things, we, in order to move it and kind of work with some logic, we have to specify some new variables. We need some starting variables, and then we can edit those variables, and then each time we basically just draw those variables. And so each time we draw them, they'll be different based on input that changes the variables. So. If that doesn't make too much sense, don't worry. This should make a lot more sense. So first of all, we have game exit equals false. Then we're going to go ahead and specify uh, a couple variables here. The first one will be lead underscore x. And lead x will equal 300. And then lead underscore y will equal 300. Now why are we calling this lead x and lead y? Lead will be the leader of the group of blocks, so to speak. That'll be the number one block. So basically, where's the first block and then all the other blocks behind it? So, because we're going to make a snake, and the snake is going to be built in sections, and where each section will be a block. So, this is the variables uh, for x and y, for the x and y locations of those first x and y blocks. So, the head of the snake. So, we're starting at 300, 300. And then now we come down into our while loop. And so, again, these are the, this is the events. Um, part of our loop. So we'll, first we're going to need an event that will move the snake. And the event is going to be the pressing of arrow keys. So first we'll do left and right and then we can start to incorporate up and down and all that. So uh, first let's just do left and right to keep things simple. So for event in pygame.event.get now we're going to run through those events. So we're just going to keep this for loop because this is our like event handling loop here. So if it's a quit, then we quit, obviously. But then we're going to specify some new events. So we're going to say if the event dot type equals, and that's a double equals sign, pygame dot, and then all caps now, key down, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go, well, now we need to know, first of all, uh, what key was that. So that could be a Q, it could be a 1, a 3, uh, or an arrow. So we need to make sure that these were an arrow, and then specify which arrow, so then we can kind of we, we can handle the specific arrows. So if it was a key down, what do we want to do? We're going to ask the question if event dot key and then double equals sign equals pi game dot k capital underscore and then all caps left. So if they hit that left arrow key, what do we want to do? Well, we in theory, would like to do lead underscore x, and then since they want to move left, that would be minus equals. So minus equals that'd be a subtraction of x, right? We'd want to like go down x. So minus equals, and then we're going to move it by 10 because our block is 10 wide and tall. We want to also move it by segments of 10, so that so we can make our script a little bit easier to code. Um, and you'll see why later on, but uh, we'll we'll do that for now. And then we also need to ask. So that's how I move it left. But then we also need to ask if event dot key equals pi game dot k underscore all caps right. If it was right, then we want to add to the x variable. So we would say lead underscore x plus equals ten, and that would change the location of the lead x and lead y. So then we come down here, we fill, we're drawing our rectangle. We don't want this red rectangle anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So we don't need that anymore. And let's bring up our update. And now we're going to put a uh, lead underscore x and then lead underscore y in the creation of this rectangle, this black rectangle on our white background and then we update the display. So let's bring this up too so we have the condensed space here. And that should be everything, but we're going to see this works a little finicky and we'll have to have to fix that. But let's go ahead and run that and see where we stand. 
save and run. And just for anybody who's <laughs> wondering, uh, if you're not familiar with saving and running things, um, I just press F5 and then it asks me if I want to save it because I need to save it. So I hit F5, enter, and that brings it up. You can also just go to run and then run module and you see that it says F5 there, but just letting you guys know. Um, so anyway, we got our, our object or a little, little rectangle here and we can hit the arrow keys and we see it moves. But if we hold the arrow key, it doesn't continue moving and that's kind of annoying. But also more importantly for a snake game, we actually want it to be, a, it has to continue moving. That's part of what makes the snake game challenging is you have to think kind of fast. So as soon as you enter a direction, it holds that direction and continues that direction. So this doesn't actually stand. It won't, it won't continue working. Um, even though our objective is snake, I would like to show you guys how you can do something where you hold the arrow key, you release the arrow key, and it, it will keep moving while you're holding it and stop moving when you release it. It is kind of useful. So I still want to show you guys that before we go to our snake game. Because uh, most games are actually probably going to be more so like they want to move until you release the key. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Stay tuned for that.